Good morning. We'd like to welcome you to Nazareth Baptist Church this morning. It's good to see everybody. If you are willing and able this morning, let's stand as we sing this song, Because He Lives. Good to see each one of you again.
this morning. Good morning. It's good to be with you in the Lord's house this morning. If you're visiting with us this morning, we'd just like to make yourselves at home. We're here for one purpose this morning in the church, and that's to lift up the Lord and worship Him in song and worship this morning. Uh, we'll go to a little bit things different this morning. If you would, the ushers, if you would come forward this morning uh, to receive the morning's offering, uh, we'll go change it up a little bit this morning. Bow with me for a word of prayer this morning. Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, and Father, we want to be thankful for another day in your house, Lord. Father, we thank you uh, for this church, Father. Lord, we thank you for these homes and these families, Lord, if you come this morning, God, to worship you. And Father, we pray this morning, God, that our prayer is, Lord, that we'll uh, lift your name up, Father. And Lord, we just pray this morning, Father, if there be a need in this, Lord, if there be a need for salvation, Father, we pray that you would meet that need today, Father. We pray if there be one among us today, Lord, who's lost, Father, we pray that you would draw them to you by the preaching of your word, Father, this morning, Lord. And Father, I pray this morning for Brother Jason that you would anoint him, God, to preach your word, Father. Lord, I pray that you would touch his heart. I pray, God, you give him utterance this morning, Father. And Lord, I pray that he'll do your will this morning, Father, in your word. I pray for Robert and the choir as they come later, Father. I pray that you bless them this morning in worship, Father. And Lord, I pray today, God, that we'll say it's been a good day to be in your house, Father. Lord, I pray that we'll set aside those things in our hearts and our minds, Father, that may weary us, those things, Father, that we're thinking about tomorrow or even today, Father, that we'll put those things outside, Father, that we'll submit to your will this morning, Father, and we'll worship you this morning, Lord. And Father, I pray for this offering. I pray, God, that we'll give of a, a, a thankful heart, Father. And Lord, I pray that you would just use this offering for the furtherance of your kingdom. And Lord, we ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
Good morning. Now, I know when you thought everything was going to be a little different, when you said that, everybody immediately gets nervous and starts sweating a little. Uh, I know because I did too. So, uh, here's the deal this morning. I, I was studying this week. You know, we've been going through pursuing godliness. We've been talking about spiritual disciplines, the way you and I, the way you and I per, are in pursuit of being more and more like Jesus every day. We have went through Bible study. Uh, we talked about prayer last week. And this morning is about worship. And, and, and I know what you're thinking, well, that's not a real spiritual discipline, well, it is. Uh, because I'm going to tell you what takes place during worship, and I'm going to preach a very quick sermon this morning, okay? And, and, and I just want you to listen very closely. I wanted to do this at the beginning. I felt really impressed this week. The Holy Spirit wants me to do that, and the Lord wants me to do that. Uh, I talked to Robert earlier this week about it. And, of course, we try to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. So me and Robert and Josh have decided to do the service this way and organize it this way because we believe that's what the Lord have us to do. So I'm going to preach my sermon first. And it's about pursuing godliness and it's about worship, okay? Uh, that that is a spiritual discipline that you and I should practice is worship. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about worship and then I'm going to get into some very uh, bit details from Scripture and then I'm going to give you an invitation for something, okay? So let's go through this real quick. Worship means to ascribe worth to God. You could actually say, and I could actually say, instead of worship, that it's worship. You and I, when we worship God, we are ascribing worth to God. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Now I'm going to ask you that a little bit in just a few minutes. Is how much is God worth to you? How much is God worth to you? I want to read a quote by Donald Whitney. He says, The waters of worship should never stop flowing from our heart, for God is always God and always worthy of worship. No matter where we are in our life, no matter what's going on with our life, God is always worthy of worship. Now, we, you and I think of worship, and a lot of people think of worship. You think of people standing up in the church, holding up their hands, or raising up their hands, shouting. All those things are worship, yes, but it's not the physical aspect of worship. Worship is spiritual. Worship is our spirit, and our spirit, we are worshiping God, who is, by the way, spirit. Uh, Jesus said this to the woman at the well. He says, but the hour is coming and now ends when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. You see, it's not so much the physical form of the worship, it's what comes from your heart. It's that, that you're worshiping God in your spirit, because God is spirit. Worship comes in many different forms and fashions. Number one, worship is public. You and I are here publicly today. Corporately today as a church to lift up our hands to God and to praise Him. Uh, Psalm 35, 18 says, I will give you thanks in the great assembly. I will praise you among many people. Worship is also individual and private or private and individual. The psalmist writes this. He says, My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you. And the night watch is noticing that verse that he's just simply saying, I'm worshiping God. I'm worshiping God. Whether it's public or whether it's private, when you and I worship, the focus isn't on nobody around us. It's not on uh, what I got to do tomorrow. Worship is about focusing on God. Now, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly from here on out. So I want you to pay close attention to this, and I want you to listen, because I believe the Holy Spirit laid this on my heart this week. I'm going to bring out some certain things about worship, how we worship and why we worship, okay? How we worship God and why we worship God. And these are just a few reasons, because there's many. And I want to say this, the only reason that you and I can worship God is because of Jesus, that you and I can enter into God's uh, presence uh, boldly. Uh, through the blood of Jesus. I believe it's Hebrews 10 that tells us that, Hebrews 10, 19. But here's, I want to say this. This is how worship is a spiritual discipline. When I worship God, it's supposed to change me. Listen closely. When I worship God, it is supposed to change me. And I'm going to give you an example. If I worship God because God is faithful, then that's going to drive me to be more faithful. 
If I worship God because He is loving toward me, then that's going to drive me to be more loving, to be loving like God is. If I worship in God because He's compassionate toward me or other people that I see, then that's going to drive me to be more compassionate. You see, when I worship, it, it changes me. That's how it's a spiritual discipline. Uh, there's a lot of different ways we worship God. Number one, we worship God through His Word. Uh, I got some scripture up on the screen, Nehemiah 8, 5, and 6. This is one of the first worship gatherings uh, after the, the people of Israel were, were uh, sent away into captivity and they were coming back. Ezra leads them in worship, and he just simply picks up the words of God. He blesses God, and he opens it. And I want you to see what, what happens. It says, Then all the people answered and said, Amen, Amen, while they lifted up their hands and they bowed their hands and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Now, we can worship God through His Word that way. You can also worship God through song. Psalm 95, 2 and 3 says, Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to Him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. We also worship God through His creation. If you've got a bulletin, you can look at the very front of your bulletin this morning. Uh, it is Nehemiah 9.6. It praises God for the creation uh, that He has made. We worship God through prayer. The psalmist in, uh, says this, Let my prayer be set before you as incense, and the lifting up of my hands is the evening sacrifice. We also worship God through our bodies and through our service. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual act of worship. We worship God through thanksgiving. Psalm 100, verse 4 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. We worship God through confession of sin. Psalm 51, verses 1 and 2, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, and wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Another way we worship God, and I want you to pay close attention to this, because I believe we all find ourselves in this point, and some of you here this morning are in this spot. We worship God even in times of suffering. Job 1, 20 through 21 says, Then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head. And he fell to the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's some of the ways how we worship God. But I'm going to give you just a few this morning of why we worship God. And I'm going to ask you the second question now. Is why are you here this morning? Josh gave us a clue this morning. Why are we here? We're here to worship. That's why we're here. Now, now here's the thing. There's a big misconception that we come to hear the preacher preach. That's not why you're here. Uh, we come to hear Robert sing or lead us in and singing. That, that's not why we're here. If you're here for any of those reasons, you're here for the wrong reason. Did you know that? The reason you're here is to worship God. Our focus is on Him. Yes, we're gathered together here as a group of believers at Nazareth Baptist Church, but I hope why you're here is because you came to worship God as an individual. You came to worship God. So I'm going to give you a few reasons. And, and by the way, this is, a, this is about this much of a list you can make of why you need to worship God. I just feel, I feel like the Lord led me into saying these this morning. Why do I worship God? Number one, because of His forgiveness. Because of His forgiveness. I want you to look. I think this is one of the most beautiful stories in all of Scripture. Uh, is when Jesus is dining at the, man, at the house of a man named Simon. And this woman comes in with an alabaster box. And the description she gets is she's a sinner. She's a sinner, just like you and me. It says, And when she knew that Jesus sat at the table at the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, and stood at His feet behind Him weeping. Why was she weeping? She was in the presence of who? God. And what had just happened to her? She had been what? Forgiven. Watch. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with her hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. That's a perfect picture of worship perfect picture of worship of someone who's been forgiven 
of their sins. Number two, we worship God because he answers prayer. Psalm 66, 19 through 20 says, But certainly God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me. So we worship God because he answers, he hears and answers our prayers. In 1 John 4, 6, we see another reason why we worship God. It's because of his love. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. That same love is the one that done this one because he sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Now, here's the deal. This morning, from the rest of this service, from this time of invitation forward, the invitation is simply this. I'm going to invite you to worship God this morning. Okay? Now, you can worship God. You, you may, God may give you something to say this morning. I don't know what God's going to lay on your heart or what He's going to want you to do. God may give you something to say. You may want to come up here and open up your Bible and read some Scripture, whatnot, whatever it is. But you know you can come up here and do that. God may want you to come to this altar and just pour out your heart to Him in prayer. Uh, you may be here this morning and you're going through a time of suffering. But you know what? You can worship God through times of suffering. Uh, matter of fact, you, we could take that example from Job and apply it to all of our lives. Because at some point in time, we're all going to be suffering or in a state of suffering. Uh, you can come and worship God because He's forgiven you for your sin. You can come and worship God because He's answered some of your prayers this week. You can come and worship God just simply for the fact that he sent Jesus to die for you and die for me. And that you've accepted that. That he's given us an opportunity to believe in him. He's given us that opportunity. He's, he's called us by name. He's called us to him. His Holy Spirit has spoken to us and drawn us to him. And, and, and given us that opportunity to believe in him, okay? Now, now folks, if the only thing... If the only reason you believe is that you can praise God for this morning is because you've been born again, that's all the more reason to praise Him and worship Him today. So here it is. This morning, I want you to worship. You can worship in your pew. You can worship standing up. You can worship sitting down. You can come to this altar and praise God throughout the rest of this service whenever you want, however you want. But Robert's going to come now, and, and we're going to... Uh, Start our, start our song service. And it's just like I mentioned this morning, like the psalmist said, we can worship God through song. We can, we can praise Him. If you feel like the Lord wants you to lift up your hands, lift up your hands. Uh, if God uh, impresses up on you to share anything, share it. If God wants you to shout, shout. Uh, whatever it is you feel like the Holy Spirit leads you to do this morning. But, but the main focus, here's what I want you to do, and this is how I want you to treat the rest of this service. If you will, just right now at this very moment, I want everybody to just bow your head and close your eyes. Bow your head, close your eyes. And this is how I want you to treat the rest of the service this morning. Now, you don't have to leave your head bowed and your eyes closed the whole time, but just listen to this very quickly. You're the only one here. You're the only one here. And your only audience is God. You're the only one here. And the only one you're in front of is God. Now I'm going to ask you this question again. How much is God worth to you? How much is God worth to you? How much is your salvation worth to you? How much is your God answering your prayers worth to you? How much is being forgiven worth to you? Now when I get done speaking... Robert's going to ask some more people to come forward. If they, it, are they going to go ahead and come? Yeah, y'all go ahead and come sing. And here's what we're going to do. From the time the first note is hit, this service is yours. I want you to worship God this morning. I want us all to worship God together this morning. Be obedient to the Holy Spirit this morning, okay? If you want to sit there the rest of the service with your head bowed and your eyes closed, we, we come not to hear the preacher. We've come not just to give some money. This morning to worship God. How much, how much is God worth to you?
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let's stand together as we sing that doxology once again and lift up the name of Jesus this morning. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father. Simply come, longing just to bring something that's the word that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you. It's all about you. 
It's all about you, Jesus. And I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus.
fulfill the promise your buried body began to break out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave as no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the
says for while we were still weak at the right time Christ died for the ungodly for one will scarcely die for a righteous person though perhaps for a good person one would dare to die but God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners 
Christ died for us. He shows his love for us in that while we were dirty, filthy, rotten sinners, Christ died, died for us. Christ died for us. I don't want to belabor our time this morning. Those are the songs that we had prayed over and, and many of you that I contacted this week and asked to pray have prayed over and and uh, but like brother Jason said just a few moments ago this is not my time this is not this is not our time this is this is your time this is all of our time to come together and worship corporately some with a word and some with a song some with a scripture so I want to give you that opportunity uh, this morning, if you have a word that you'd like to share, or something you'd like to praise the Lord for, then again, we won't we won't belabor that this morning, and and we're not going to sing uh, we're not going to sing any more songs. Maybe one more that they're playing, uh, but we want to give you that chance this morning. getting ready to start back and at five they've been meeting up there for years to have prayer for the school I, I don't do Facebook but I know a lot of you do and there's been a lawsuit filed one person can stop prayer in school one person can stop us from praying in school sooner or later they'll try to stop us from praying in our homes and worshiping God I think sometimes that's a test for me as a Christian to be like Daniel throw my doors open throw my windows open and let them see me praying anyway I think they were supposed to meet at 4 o'clock today up at school. I don't know if that's, they talked about canceling it. I'm going to go anyway. And if I'm the only one, I don't care. I'm going to meet in the parking lot at the gymnasium. And I'm going to worship God. <laughs> been teaching my grandsons about prayer and how to pray and how to just open your heart. And share with God what's on your heart, how you feel, what your needs are. But also to praise Him in that prayer, in that time. To give Him thanks for what He's done and what He's going to do. I think we're in a troubling time, our government and all that's going on in the world. <clears throat> and I saw a statistic that said 46% of our children in DeKalb County don't know Christ. That doesn't speak well for parents and grandparents and, and those that have the rule over those children that are coming into school. And it's tough, I know, being a young person in school, especially a lot of times when you're a Christian and you have maybe some friends that don't want to be friends with you because you are that way. I didn't get saved till I was 23 years old. I was raised in church, but 
I never accepted Christ. If I could go back, I would change that. If I was a young person, I'd want to be a Christian. And I wouldn't care what anybody else thought about me. I'd worship God. I'd be Christ-like before them in school. And I'd try to win them to the Lord if I could. I, I want to pray for the kids right now, if that's okay, and for coming back to school and for the teachers. Teachers are under a lot of pressure on what they can say and what they can do. I was allowed to speak at Fife a few years ago and share my testimony during Veterans Day. And uh, the principal and some of the others got a little bit worried because I shared Christ. But they didn't tell me I couldn't. But I'd have done it anyway, I think. But I just want to share a prayer with you or have a prayer with you uh, for our kids that's going back to school and our teachers. Father, I thank you, God, for this time of worship that we can come, God, and lift up the name of Jesus and say, and thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us and all you're going to do. I thank you, God, and I praise your name that we can come to you and worship like this, Father. God, you're an unusual God. You deserve an unusual service. God, I want to lift our schools up to you. And our children that are in the schools, Father, I pray for them for strength, God, when their time of testing comes, Lord, through a teacher or through a, another student, Lord, that they'll stand firm in their faith and their belief, God. God, I pray for their homes, uh, their moms and dads and their grandparents, Lord. God, that you'll help them be parents, God, that'll raise their children to know you and to know all about you, God, and to help you help them, uh, Lord, to lead you toward a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ as their Savior, if they're not saved already, Lord. If they are, God, I pray that the parents and the grandparents, God, will have Bible studies and, and speak of, of you before their children, God, to help them to know you, God, and to prepare them, Lord. Yeah, God, as they grow, to leave the home, God, to go into the colleges, Lord, where they're going to face some liberal professors, God, that don't know you and don't care about you, Father. Lord, I just ask, God, that you... Uh, guide and direct their paths, Lord. Uh, God, be with the teachers too, Father. Lord, give them strength, Father, to stand firm in what they believe. And Lord, Lord, some of them may face uh, some difficult situations sometimes, Lord. I ask you to be with them in those times, Father. Help us, Lord, to be like Daniel, to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God, and say, whatever happens, God's in control, and he'll take care of us. But where he does or not, we're going to worship him anyway. Ask these things in your holy name. Amen. I just felt led to share some scripture that's um, really helped me the last few weeks. So I'm going to read from Romans um, 8, 31 um, through 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also give us graciously all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, he was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation 
will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I hope somebody is encouraged by that as I was this week. Psalmist uses this word bless the Lord. We think about it like a blessing, something we receive, but we translate that in the Psalms and it's saying, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Worship his holy name. Let's sing this chorus together. Then we'll ask Brother Jason to come ahead. Bless the Lord, O my soul. service out like this uh, and I feel like the Lord is impressed us on my heart uh, I'm going to ask Robert to sing just one more verse of invitation this morning and this whole service has been an invitation but this invitation is to you this morning if you're lost I want to give you an opportunity to walk this aisle I feel like there's someone here this morning that said if you I just get another, another verse that you'll come this morning you may have been in this church for many years you may have been in church all your life as, as Jim said he grew up in church he didn't get saved just 23 I think about Larry Robbins. You was in church all your life. About six years ago, God showed you you were lost. And you may be here this morning. You may be old. You may be young. You may be middle-aged. But if you know that you need Jesus as your Savior this morning, I want to give you an opportunity. One verse. Just one verse this morning. As Robert sings, one more verse. I want to give you an opportunity this morning to come and accept Christ as your Savior. The sun comes up.
first. Um, we should never be ashamed to stand up and praise God. And if you're feeling like your heart has got to explode out of your chest and you feel like you're supposed to say something, don't be afraid. I hate standing up in front of people and singing. But I do it because that's what God's called me to do. I'm, I'm terrified to be in front of people. I'm terrified to talk. But when God tells me to do it, I do it. Because he died for me. A horrible, horrible human being. A horrible human being. He bled. He was tormented. Tormented and beat for me and for you. To have somebody love you that much. It is hard to stand back and not say a thing. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for my beautiful daughter that I don't deserve. Thank you, God, for my church family that I don't deserve. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your holy name. here to confess I didn't come prepared this morning my heart was not prepared for the service I had not prayed for brother Jason nor the service as I should but God blesses us in spite of ourselves sometimes but I, I feel the burden because there are so many lost and dying I know I love the Lord. You know, the Bible, I think it's Paul says, when I would do good. Uh, I'm just not where I need to be in my daily walk. So I, I, that's all I, I really want to just confess. I don't know if there's anyone here like me. Everyone else may have their heart in accord with God's will, but I know mine's not been. And I, I ask your forgiveness for that because just as she said, we are blessed. This is a, a wonderful uh, Christian fellowship to be a part of. But we can't be a weight, you know, just taking, taking, taking. We've got to be a part of the, uh, the worship. We've got to be a part of the ministries of our church. And... Uh, as the gentleman said earlier, you know, the world is getting darker every day. So if we don't 
stay and pull together if we don't do our part if I don't do my part uh, then God's kingdom is not what it should be there's somebody that might not come to know the Lord and I don't want that burden I don't want that on my soul uh, I know what God has done for me in my life and I know I wouldn't be here if it weren't for him so I ask your forgiveness and certainly my heavenly father's forgiveness for not being what I should be and not coming with my heart ready to worship um, I had a song on my mind uh, I, I, and it I guess it goes with what we've been saying but um there's an old, old song called What Wondrous Love, and it has always blessed my heart to think about the wondrous love of God. We, we just, you know, we take things for granted, and those of us that grew up in church, we lose the sense of that miracle and that... It's just mind-boggling that someone would love us enough uh, to go through what our Savior went through. And so I just want to share that with you while they're praying. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that bear the dreadful curse? When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, beneath God's righteous frown, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul, for my soul. Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. And when from death I'm free, I'll live on. I'll live on, and when from death I'm free, I'll live on, and when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyous be throughout eternity. I'll sing on. I'll sing on and through eternity I'll sing on. Pray for me and forgive me. Church, are you ready to close it out? It's been good to be in the Lord's house today. I uh, appreciate your attendance. Uh, unusual services are, are pretty good, aren't they? They're, they're pretty good. Uh, thankful for Brother Jason, his heart this morning to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Uh, before we dismiss this morning, uh, it's good to see Paula back this morning. Good to see you back in church this morning. It's good to see Tammy back this morning in church. And um, yeah, Nicole, Nicole back from the my teams. Uh, good to see Nicole back. And I may be missing one. If I did, I apologize. But it's good to see each and every one of you here uh, at service this morning. Tracy, you want to come this morning? Oh yeah. I'm
I'm sorry. The most important thing this morning, Loretta Buchanan has been saved this morning, accepted Christ as her Savior. <laughs> Thank you for your obedience this morning. When we adjourn, if you would, you, and Chrissy can sing with you at the back door, and uh, we'll shake hands with you and love on you as we leave today. Thank you. Brooke Moore's wedding shower, two to four, in the gymnasium today, Life Center. Thank you. You might want to sit down. Everybody in the back's not going to be able to see what I'm going to show. Um, it's here. It is Christmas in August. We are doing, starting our Operation Christmas Child. Uh, we're getting ready to pack some shoe boxes. Um, on the tree outside, you'll notice that there are some little ornaments with lots and lots of glitter. I was gonna. The plan was for you to take an ornament with a list of things to get. But since they're so messy, I went ahead and um, saved you some ornament uh, glitter suffering. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over my house. <laughs> okay, so this one is for girls uh, ages 10 to 14. There are several different um, items that they want you to pack. One of them is a wow item. And that could be things like a stuffed animal, a doll, or a soccer ball. Um, then there are personal care items and school supply items also. But what I want you to do is go to the tree and don't pick the first little tab because that tells you the girls and the age limit. Um, the next one will tell you what you need to get. And I forgot to put the ages on the back. So you, after you see the front tab, you might want to write that down on the back of the list. Um, these are all for girls this week. Next week, I'll add boys. They'll all stay for the whole month. Um, some of the things that they um, suggested on the Samaritan's Purse website is if you wanted to buy a water bottle that they could really, really use with a big opening at the top, you could put all your little goodies, your hair bows, and um, at uh, the Dollar Tree, they have uh, little washcloths about this big, and they're for a dollar, and they put them in water and it expands. And so they have, there's their washcloth. Um, next week, we'll have the boxes, and we'll have the big box for you to go in and start bringing your things in, and it'll, it'll be near the tree. Um, if you want to look at the things, some more suggestions, uh, go to Samaritan's Purse online. And then you look up Operation Christmas Child, and then there's another little tab that says Pack a Box, and it tells you a lot of good ideas about what you're going to pack. Um, we, we will still have a packing party in September, so you'll be able to um, pack your own boxes um, with us. Um, there are little, along with these little girl and boy ornaments, there are um, little church ornaments out there. And that's just to remind you that, that you could always bring any kind of school supplies, paper and pencils and stuff like that. All right, thank you. You come pray for us? Yes. Actually, oh, me? Yes. Uh, this Wednesday night, um, <coughs> We have a back-to-school swimming party, and that's for our children and youth. Uh, so we're excited about that. It's going to be at Rainsville Pool from 6 to 8 o'clock. So kids, youth, uh, we're all going to meet up there um, and swim, and we'll have pizza and chips and drinks and stuff like that. So plan on eating, and we'll eat at 6 and then wait 30 minutes and then go swimming. So <laughs> that'll be from 6 to 8 at the Rainsville Pool this week. Uh, I'm going to ask Caden to come and, and close us out with a word of prayer and pray for Caden. A lot of our students, this is it's back to school week. I appreciate Jim praying for them. Thank you for that. And uh, uh, some of our students are going to be moving off to college, and Caden is one of those. So pray for him as he prays for us this morning and as we close in prayer.
let us pray. Dear God, uh, thank you for the service we had today. What a wonderful way to start the week. Such a special service. It really touched my heart. And I just thank you for the importance Brother Jason put on worship. We need to worship you. And I thank you for Brother Jim's prayer for the schools and all the students going back to school. I pray that you will allow us to be a light for you in whatever school we're in. And I pray for all the students, and I pray that we'll have a safe rest of the week and a safe school year and be a light for you. In your name I pray. Amen.